Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Marcus Meta, and today I'm going to be telling you about my experience of buying a 2007 Land Rover Defender. <laughs> should you look for when you're buying a used Defender because there are so many on the market and they're quite old now. So what are the things you want to look out for? What's easy to replace? What's more difficult to replace? And what did I look for when I was buying my Defender, which is a 2007 Land Rover Defender in Keswick Green, which is a 90 wheelbase rather than a 110, which is what I went for based on a few things I'm going to talk about in this video. So if you are looking at buying a Defender, watch the rest of this video. I think it'd be really useful to hear my experience of what it was like buying this car. Um, but also things where I went wrong that I probably would have done differently if I had the chance again. I'm a cosmetic doctor by trade and so this experience is purely my personal experience and it is by no means an expert opinion. However, I know a lot of people that do want to buy a Land Rover Defender for whatever reason, whether that's using it as their daily driver, whether they're thinking of buying it as an investment as prices are going up, or whether they're using it for off-road like it was originally designed for, do come from all different backgrounds. So I hope this is useful. Although I'm a cosmetic doctor that usually deals with faces, this is me talking about cars. So let's start about the basics when you're looking at buying a Land Rover Defender. So the first thing is to decide on what engine you want and what year model you want based on that. So the Defender was 1990 that it was named the Defender. And from 1990 to 1998, there were two engine types, the 200 and the 300 TDI. From 1998 to the year 2007, it was the TD5 engine, which is what I went for, which I'll tell you why in a minute. After 2007 to 2012, it got the Ford Puma engine, which was a Ford Transit engine, actually, uh, and it was a 2.4 litre. So in 2012, the engines went slightly down in size to meet EU emissions. It went to a 2.2 litre. So the different engines have very different characteristics. And also, it depends on where you're buying the car for as to what engine you might go for. The TD5, which is what I went for, was the original engine made by Land Rover before it got taken over by Ford and then had the Puma engines from 2007 onwards. So I went for the TD5 because I wanted a car that was more going to be used as a bit of a toy, more of an investment, going to keep it for a number of years rather than something I was using as my daily. If I was using it more as my daily driver, I would want uh, the newer engine, so the Ford Puma engine. And the reason for that is, is because it had a six speed gearbox and actually cruises much better at 60, 70, 80 miles per hour. Whereas this car, the TD5, is not that great when you get up to speed. You can comfortably drive around around 50 to 60, but it vibrates a lot and it's not that comfortable on longer journeys. I also wanted the TD5 because it is slightly the more sought after engine with Land Rover enthusiasts and people that collect these vehicles. It was the engine built in Solihull uh, by Land Rover themselves. And this model particularly is a 2007 car. So it was the, one of the last production vehicles with that engine type in it. It also is a Keswick Green Defender, which is a bit unusual as the Keswick Green was a colour that was introduced in 2007 to the final year. So to get a TD5 in Keswick Green was a bit unusual. And I found out actually from the coding on this vehicle, it was sprayed in November 2006 and sold and registered in January 2007. So it was just at that end period when the vehicles were finishing. I imagine this car got sprayed in the Puma colour, the Keswick, while it was still in the factory, alongside all the newer cars that had just been produced at the time. The TD5 engine itself is quite noisy. Um, it vibrates quite a lot and it's not that great at higher speeds. It is, however, a very powerful engine and it can be tuned. So a lot of people that want to increase the horsepower out of this engine, it can be quite easily done. It's an easier car to repair than the newer engines too, so it makes it easy to work on from a mechanical point of view. So once you've decided what engine you're going to go for, the next thing is to decide on colour. And colour is actually quite important when we talk about Defenders because the colour can be difficult to change. So to respray a Defender is quite a big job and because all the panels have got to be removed, they are like big Meccano sets, but actually to take them apart and respray them can be quite an expensive job to get it done properly. I got a quote to have my car resprayed when I was originally looking at different colours of Defenders, and you're talking upwards of about £3,000 to get a decent respray. So that can really impact the cost. So I would say colour actually is one of the most important aspects to get right. And that's the body colour. 
The other elements can be resprayed to suit. So I got the roof resprayed, the wheel arches resprayed, the wing mirrors, but the metal bodywork of the car actually was the factory color, which I quite like that it's in keeping with what the VIN plate says as well. You then got to decide on what body style you want. Do you want a 90 or a bigger 110? So it depends how many people you're looking to carry. And also when you're carrying out work yourself or doing repair costs, that's got to be factored in too. The 90s are cheaper to repair. There's less body on them to do. There's probably less problems with the bodywork in the sense of corrosion and rust. I went for the 90. I quite like the 90 at the short wheelbase. I don't need to carry people in the back particularly, although as you can see, I do have a couple of rear seats that are fitted aftermarket, but it's not something that I really depended on. I like the look of the 90 particularly. There were different trim levels when Defenders were available. So there was um, the standard uh, base spec model. There was a utility which was vanned out in the back like this was originally. And then there was the higher spec versions like the XS. So the XS had a bit of a higher spec. It had half leather seats, which were different to the standard seats that you got, which were all cloth. Um, they had heated seats. You got air conditioning in those cars and the trim was a little bit nicer throughout. So they are the higher spec vehicles. They usually sell for a bit more money. But what I would say is that actually those features are things that are quite easy to put in the car if you wanted to do anyway. These seats were not factory that I've got in this car here. And seats are one of the commonest changed items in a Defender. Really easy to do. And even to add heating to them is not an issue at all. So I actually went for utility, which only had that rear window in, as you can see right here. Now, the reason for that was is because um, I knew that I could probably do some work to it myself. So I actually cut out the windows in the side and in the rear, um, which was really easy to do. Quite a cheap job, actually. And it sounds quite daunting, but really all it is is getting a template, jigsawing the metal out with a blade, replacing the window and sealing it. And it's not a big job to do. Uh, it took me about two hours to do the, the small quarter windows and a little bit longer for the side windows. So quite a quick job really to get done. So don't be put off by a utility if you like the idea of having the windows in the back. There are loads of defenders on the market and don't be swung by cars that look really good because there can be cars that are built in 19 you know, 1992 that look fantastic. They look great, but often a lot of those parts that have been put on are covering up bigger damage underneath. And that's probably why they're a good price. So be careful when you're looking at a car that you make sure that you're looking at the right things, not the stuff that's quick and easy to, to change and replace and cosmetically make a vehicle look really attractive. When actually underneath it's maybe done 250,000 miles, but it's got nice headlights on a nice grill. And you know, it's got all those things that make you think it's a good car. Underneath there might be a lot of issues. So now let's go and take a look around my car and I'll tell you some of the things on this vehicle on Defenders in general that are easy to replace and easy to change and easy to trick people by when they're buying them because they can be replaced really easily and quite cheaply. So the first thing to look at is the front of the car. So you wanna be looking at the lights, these things are easy to replace. All the things in this next list at the front of the vehicle are easy. So you've got your lights, your front grill. This is a KBX grill on here. These are Halo LED headlights. I've changed the indicators on the front of here and the side lights to be Bear Mac uh, smoke LED lights. All this front end of the car is quite easy to change and to make look good. The next thing to look at is the wheels, the tires and the wheel arches. Now again, really easy to replace. This car had road tires on when I bought it and the uh, the arches were, were damaged and bent and looked awful. So I changed these to, these are gloss black boost alloys, original Land Rover boost alloys, and these are Cooper STT Pro tires. So the next thing when you're walking around are the wing mirrors. So the wing mirrors, again, do not be put off by these if they look bad or don't be thinking this car's great because they look great either. The wing mirrors are super easy to replace. The next thing to look at, as I mentioned earlier, is the rear of the car. So the rear windows and the rear quarter panel so the next thing to talk about is the interior. So when you look at the interior of this car, this looked nothing like this when I bought it. It was full of mud. It was all the old rubber Land Rover matting. It was horrible. And the seats were the standard Land Rover seats. So I replaced all this. I actually soundproofed, sound deadened this, which you can see in another one of my videos uh, here on YouTube. Um, but I also recarpeted it with all the carpet from Exmoor trim. Let's talk about things that you do want to be worried about, things that might put you off a vehicle. So Rust is the biggest problem with Land Rover Defenders in general. So let's start with the rear of the car. Now the rear of the car, the first thing you'll see always is the rear cross member, this big back part of the chassis here. Now this can have surface rust and this one definitely did. It was brown and streaked and surface rust isn't a problem. And how do you know if it's surface or not? Well, you really should take a sharp metal implement like a screwdriver and actually go under the chassis and poke it in different places to make sure it's solid. You want to hit the chassis to make sure it rings and feels solid. The next place we see corrosion is 
in the actual skin of the bodywork. So have a look at the bodywork. It's okay if there's a few scratches here and there because they can often be, you know, touched up or whatever. Bubbling under the paintwork is a big problem. And this classically is covered by checker plate. One of the main reasons I got this car is it actually had no checker plate on it at all. Checker plate, although looks good on the new cars, what you'll find is that people often use it to cover up all these critical areas of, uh, of damage. The next place is the the front pillar so the front pillar of the of the um, bulkhead which you can see here you do see a little bit of corrosion i've got some on mine so i hope that video has been useful just to give you an idea about if you're thinking of buying a defender if you have bought one let me know in the comments below what you looked for or any points that you might have for people that are thinking of buying one so one of the key things is don't be put off by how a car looks, whether that's bad or good. Really go a bit deeper than that when you're looking at a Defender. There are so many on the market at the moment. You wanna make sure you're getting a good one. The other tip is actually the time of the year you buy it makes a difference. In the winter time, the price of these vehicles goes up online. Buying it in spring and summer, not many people are buying them. The prices are slightly lower. So that's a good tip when you're thinking of buying. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been useful. If it has, Please keep following me for more car videos that I'm going to be doing. This is one of the cars I own. I also have a Discovery as well, which I did a video about, which you can see in the comments below, um, which is actually why I don't really like it that much, even though it's a lot newer than this car. Click subscribe in the bottom right, like this video, drop me a comment, and I'll speak to you soon.